There's so much blindness throughout the world, but a lot of it is in these places that are inaccessible by road. And there are many great eye teams in the world. They go to the end of the road, they take care of the people there, but we like to go where other people can't go or won't go. But our work begins where the road ends. We're in Upper Gorka, Nepal. Now, linear distance, we're only about 50 miles as the crow flies from Kathmandu. However, it took us three full days to get here. One day by four-wheel drive on extremely treacherous roads, and two days trekking on extremely treacherous trails. And the only way we could transport the gear is by mule caravan. So that's what we did. We found out when we got here that there's an effort to put a road in. So there's all this blasting uh, and huge rockfall avalanches, which forced us down a number of times along the, the river. So it, it made for a, an extra adventurous trek on the way in. We made it. Too close. We're actually in Machikola right now in Nepal and it's this beautiful valley, the small town and then the local people here. It's not just that they're welcoming us but they're also trusting us. It's very special to be able to be here. From the moment that we set foot in Machikola we were been mobbed by patients and uh, for us that's the most amazing thing in the world. probably about 300 patients we got on the first day. Nothing short of an onslaught. We also have a team of monks that we've been working with. It's been fabulous working with them. So we speak literally three languages. So as possible, whomever speaks, we we'll help them to translate. But for me, the most important is to help in the remote areas because they don't have that much money to spend. Some people walk for as much as two days to come to this eye camp to receive care. We started the operating room right away. We had made arrangements for food and lodging for the patients that had to stay overnight in order to receive surgeries. So it was all hands on deck and no breaks for anybody. We were going full tilt pretty much from the moment we set foot in this town. What's it? Hassa? Hassa? Oh, cool. <laughs> One of the most striking patients for me, and I'm sure for many of us, was this lady that was carried in. She couldn't navigate her on her own. She could barely see any light in front of her. And she had very, very dense, um, mature cataracts. And it's to the point where you look in her pupils and all you see is this brownish glow and that's the reflection of the light that won't get into the eye. In talking to her son, he mentioned that she used to wear shoes, but since she went blind from the mature cataracts, she has gone barefoot so she could feel tactile sensation when she walked. We are outside of our operating room, that's grass field, and just scrubbing up for our surgery. So, uh, getting as sterile as we can. 
After cataract surgery, patients have a patch over their eye and they sleep that way and the next morning there's an unveiling where all the patients gather together and the patches are removed. she was able to see colors she was able to see people she was able to walk around independently and walk up steps and the smile on her face was absolutely incredible I've been in ophthalmology now for 12 years and I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> the bigger smile was actually on her son-in-law. She was happy to be able to walk around, but uh, I think he was, maybe he was just happy not to have to carry her anymore. <laughs> The difference between being blind and having sight is really just a stroke of luck. You know, it's being born in the right place, having access to care. It's a flip of a coin. Kathmandu is probably 50 miles from here, but for most of the people here in the surrounding villages, that may as well be halfway around the world. If we aren't able to come here and provide care, these patients aren't getting it. And when you're blind here, it's, it is a matter of life and death. <laughs> 